In this video, we'll see how to solve a second-order linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients. Now, there's three cases that can occur with this type of ODE, so we'll have three examples, but they're all somewhat short. Uh, first example, 6y double prime plus y prime minus y equals 0. In any case, we are going to suppose that the solution is an exponential. So the solution y will be e to the gamma x, where gamma is a constant. Uh, sometimes you use lambda or some other variable, but I believe the textbook uses gamma, so we'll be using that. Um, we're going to substitute this into the ODE and then solve for gamma, and then we'll have our solution. Uh, in order to substitute into the ODE, we need the derivatives of this function. So let's take the first derivative and a derivative exponential. You'll just get the gamma out front. And with the second derivative, we will get another gamma out front, so it'll be gamma squared. So we've got uh, expressions for y, y prime and y double prime. We're now going to substitute those into the ODE. So there, y is replaced with e to the gamma x. y prime is replaced with gamma e to the gamma x. And y double prime is replaced with gamma squared e to the gamma x. And you notice that all three terms will have that e to the gamma x, which you can divide by that, it's non-zero, or you can factor it off. Uh, either way, we're going to be left with a quadratic equation that is in terms of gamma. In this case, it'll be 6 gamma squared plus gamma minus 1. Now, with the quadratic, you can have three cases for the solution set, and that's why we have three cases for solving this ODE, uh, because this first two steps are more or less the same. Um, you know from algebra that you know solving this could be done with the quadratic formula or with factoring, um, but more importantly that the solutions could be two real numbers, uh, one repeated real number, or uh, complex conjugates, and those are the three cases. Uh, so first you try to factor, and that's what we'll do here, and this actually does factor, and it'll lead us to the case of uh, two real distinct solutions. So this factors into 2 gamma plus 1 and 3 gamma minus 1. All right. And when you solve those two factor set equal to 0, you get your two solutions, which we'll call uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2. So gamma 1 is so negative 1 half. And gamma 2 is one third. Now if you happen to get two real distinct solutions for gamma, then the fundamental solution is given by this formula, where you basically just add in the constants C1 and C2 in front of those exponentials. So for our problem, 
going to replace gamma 1 and gamma 2 with negative 1 half and 1 third. And then we would find C1 and C2 based on the initial condition. Um, the other two cases will be covered in the next two examples. So there's our initial conditions. And using the condition that the solution is 1 when x is 0, we would get the equation c1 plus c2 equals 1. Now, if we were to take the derivative of this solution, right, that'll bring a negative one half and a one third in front of these exponentials. And so there's your derivative. And again, replacing x with 0 makes those exponentials go away, or turn to 1. Uh, so we would actually get a pretty simple equation for c1 and c2. And this gives us a system of two equations and two unknowns. And you can solve that by any method you like. Um, I'm going to use the addition or elimination method. So if we multiply the second equation by 2, and then we can add those two equations, C1 will be eliminated. Uh, so go ahead and multiply this equation by 2. You get 2 equals negative C1, which we'll add with C1 to 0, uh, plus 2 thirds C2. And when you add those two together, uh, you have 1 plus 2 is 3, and 1 plus 2 thirds is 5 thirds. And we need to now solve for C2 by multiplying by 3 fifths. If we multiply by 3 fifths, we'll get that C2 equals 9 fifths. All right, to get C1, we just go back to the easier equation and realize they have to add up to 1. So that would tell you that C1 would have to be negative 4 fifths. All right, once you have these two constants, you can write out solution to the ODE. And there it is. All right, real quickly, let's take a look at two other examples to see how step three could make things a little different. In our next example, we have 4y double prime minus 12y prime plus 9y equals 0. As always, we'll have the solution of the form y equals gamma x, sorry, y equals e to the gamma x. The derivatives are the same. When you substitute that in, you're going to have those exponentials cancel out. So start to look for how you can take a shortcut here. 
because you don't really need to make this substitution when you become comfortable with it. Um, you'll see that you can just take the constants and actually replace the order of the derivative with the exponent of gamma. So here we have 4 gamma squared minus 12 gamma plus 9 equals 0. And that's actually a perfect square trinomial. So that will result in having one solution Uh, because we get both factors being the same, and either one set equal to zero will tell you that gamma is three halves. So, we talked earlier about how we need a fundamental solution set that has two linearly independent solutions to span the, the whole solution space. And here we're only going to get one. So we will get one of these solutions. You can think of a y1 as your e to the 3 halves x. But what about y2? Um, so uh, you can actually use the process in the previous methodology analyzing the fundamental solution set. Uh, where we used that formula for u and uh, found a second solution in the case where we're only given one. You can do that in this case. Uh, we'll spare you the details and uh, just go ahead and give you the formula because it's always going to be the same. You would just take whatever y1 is and go ahead and multiply by x or whatever your independent variable is. So in this case, y2 is x times e to the 3 halves x. All right, and those are going to be linearly independent because of that x. So that gives us two linearly independent solutions. Uh, there's no initial conditions given in this problem, so uh, you know you would still have a single solution. like this. And you would figure out C1 and C2 the same way as we did before, uh, given the initial conditions. But to save time, we'll go ahead and skip over that here. Um, but we'll do that again on the third example. So in example three, again, same type of differential equation, same form of the solution, same step one. And we're going to try to jump right to what's called the characteristic equation for gamma um, because you can basically replace y double prime with gamma squared and you can replace y prime with gamma and you can just drop y altogether right? and that's what's always going to happen so there's sort of a shortcut to get to that now this does not factor so in the case when the quadratic does not factor most people would turn to the quadratic equation. And we'll do just that. So if we remember that formula, right, we have uh, minus b, which is uh, just negative 2, and plus or minus square root uh, b squared minus 4a is 1, c is 3, all over 2a. So there are the two solutions. And uh, what's going to happen here is we're going to get a negative inside the square root, which is going to lead to the complex solutions. 
Uh, but you might have two real numbers that come and you just can't factor because they're not rational numbers. And so you have to end up getting it this way. So you definitely want to have this in the back of your mind as the alternative to factoring. All right, let's make some simplifications here. Uh, obviously, I can make that a positive 2. And inside that square root, uh, that's going to be 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. Negative 8. And in the bottom, we have 2. Right. Um, I'm going to be a little careful simplifying here. Um, hopefully, remember that the square root of a negative results in an imaginary number. And it works just like it would with a positive number, except you throw an i on there. So square root of negative 8 is the same as square root of 8i, where the i is outside the square root. Uh, but square root of 8 can actually be reduced. Uh, because it's 4 times 2, um, you can write square root of 8 as 2 square root of 2. Now, since everything has a 2, you can actually reduce this. Um, but if you have problems with reducing this, a lot of students try to just cancel off the, uh, the first two. We need a 2 in all of these. Um, then it might be good to see this split up. I mean, that's the way to be sure that it's right. 2 over 2, uh, plus or minus. Two square root of two i over two, right? And here you can see why you need the twos in both of those terms at the top. So those will both simplify, and you'll actually get your two gammas: uh, one plus or minus square root of two i. So we could use this formula, but then we have an imaginary number in our function, and we kind of want a real valued function. Um, you can look through the critical thinking for the derivation, but you actually can use Euler's formula and properties of complex numbers to turn this formula into the complex version of the formula. Okay, so here's the formula for if you get complex solutions alpha plus or minus beta i, where alpha is the real part and beta is the imaginary part. Uh, you would just put alpha as your uh, gamma, sort of, right, e to the alpha x. And then the beta goes in front of sines and cosines, and you have a real valued solution. So our alpha is 1, and our beta is square root of 2. So we can just get rid of the alpha there. And we can put in a square root of 2 here. We figure out C1 and C2 the same way we did before, using the initial conditions. So let's go back to our initial conditions. And using the fact that when x is 0, y is 1, e to the 0 is 1, so that goes away. And cosine of 0 is 1. And sine of 0 is 0. So this actually tells you what c1 is. It tells you that c1 is 1. So we know there's a 1 there. Uh, what about the derivative of this thing? I'm going to take the derivative of that to find out c2. And uh, I use the product rule, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x uh, times the cosine sine part plus e to the x times the derivative of the cosine sine part. Right? The derivative of the cosine is going to have that square root of 2 come out. And then it's going to be a negative sign. Okay. 
and then we're going to have c2 and a square root of 2 will come out of there as well and the derivative of the sine is the cosine now we can substitute the initial condition that when x is 0 y prime is 1 plus square root of 2 uh, so this gets a lot simpler when x is 0 because the exponential goes away and uh, cosines will go to 1 and sines will go away completely so that's just a 1 from the first part and this goes away and then that's going to be 1 there So the right hand side would look like 1 plus c2 square root of 2, and the left is 1 plus square root of 2. And so you can obviously see that c2 is also 1. So using the fact that both constants are 1, we can just go back and remove them and get the general solution there.